Okay, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much. Yes, I can tell the youth are in. Good evening. Do take a seat. Grab your drink. Come on in. Uh, we are going to start our final night of Realize 2019. Realize is put on by Above Bar Church. It's an opportunity to hear different people's stories, experiences, and expertise, and how it intersects with their faith in Jesus. And our final night, last but definitely not least, we have as our guest Warner Miller. Warner Miller is an actor. He's flown all the way from New York just to be here with us. Yeah. Yes, his arms are very tired. He has, um, uh, he's an American gangster with Denzel Washington. He's in Netflix's Luke Cage as the villain Tone um, and many other uh, credits to his name. Could you please give a warm welcome to Warner Miller? Now, I am especially excited about this because I've got an, an American uh, up here with me at last. Um, so this is exciting. Um, great. Warner, yes. did you grow up thinking, I'm going to be an actor? Absolutely not. Absolutely no. not. Uh, can everyone hear me? No. Uh, hello. Hello, hello. Well, I am an actor, so I, I, do, I do know how to project. <laughs> so just in case, for times like this when, you know, there are technical difficulties. But, um, but no, I, I didn't grow up uh, wanting to be an actor. Uh, it was definitely the last thing that anyone would think that, oh, there we go, there we go. Uh, it's the last thing that anyone, here, let me face this way. Uh, 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 okay, uh, the last thing that anyone uh, would have thought that I would uh, pursue as a career, um, I grew up very, uh, I was shy, uh, I had a stutter, um, Definitely didn't like uh, attention. In fact, it's actually ironic. Um, for, for the two things that I do as a, as a living right now, both require me to uh, be on a stage in front of people talking. Um, both are very uh, uh, antithetical to the type of personality that I have because I still don't like a lot of attention, believe it or not. Um, I, I do get nervous when I get on stage or am in front of a room of people looking at me like uh, this one. Um, uh, so no, so no, I didn't grow up wanting to be an actor. Um, I, do you have time to tell the story of how I'm you, It's your okay. night. Well, uh, so, so I, like I said, I was a shy kid. And uh, when I was in high school, uh, about 15, 16 years old, uh, there was a girl that I like. These, many of these stories always begin with some sort of uh, romance or trying to get the attention of uh, the opposite sex. But yes, I, th there was a girl that I liked. And um, I, uh, th there was a picture. I had a talk earlier today, and I showed a picture of myself as a kid. So it, it, um, me just telling the story doesn't do it justice, because as a kid, I had these big, I wore glasses, these big, big, thick glasses, had a wonky haircut. My clothes were not uh, uh, the, the best. Uh, clothes to wear, so I, I definitely was not uh, the attractive uh, person that uh, uh, young ladies would uh, want to talk to, and I wasn't for this young lady as well. She didn't know I existed, but I found out that she was auditioning for this play in my school, so I came up with the, with the diabolical idea that I also would audition for this play, because why? Because auditioning for this play would uh, get me close to her because she was auditioning for the play. And then once I got close to her, I don't know what would happen, but it, you know, I would get close to her because I hadn't really, really thought out this plan. Um, but in, in my 16-year-old head, this plan was, I mean, just seamless. It was the perfect plan. I mean, what girl could resist a guy who would audition for a play to get next to them. So um, that's what I thought, at least. So I auditioned for this play, and uh, when you know it, I actually uh, got cast in this play. This play was called Fame. It was a musical. Uh, and uh, however, the girl didn't get cast in the play. <laughs> yes. So uh, because I was, I was not like a... Uh, a bold 
guy, you know, I didn't, you know, protest uh, upon being in this play, so I uh, eventually just, you know, sucked it up and did the play. But the, a crazy thing happened. Um, I actually found out that uh, acting was kind of fun, and it was something I was pretty good at doing. So uh, it, it turned out great, and, and I usually say this part for the end, but I'll put it now, I ended up getting the girl. She became, she became my high school sweetheart. She thought it was quite charming that I stuttered and, and uh, didn't know how to talk and whatnot, and as well as my glasses, which thankfully, when I turned 18, I invested in some contact lenses. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, the acting part. So I did the play, and after I did the play, you know, I realized it was fun and everything, but I never really gave it a second thought because um, I, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. If you, uh, I, I know some of you thought that I've, from my accent, that I was probably from like Liverpool or something like that, but I, but I am from uh, New York City, uh, Brooklyn to be specific. And uh, in my neighborhood, there weren't like actors, like I, I didn't conceive that acting could genuinely be something that I would do uh, as a career. Uh, so when I got to university, I actually went to university to, uh, to pursue uh, being in the music business because I wanted to, you know, uh, work behind the scenes and make big deals and sign contracts and whatnot. And by my second year in college, uh, I saw that they were advertising a play and to, to, to be in, in the school play. So I was like, ah, oh, you know, uh, you know, what the heck, you know, I'll, I'll audition for it. And I ended up, long story short, I ended up being cast in this play, the lead in this play, and I ended up doing so well in it that the theater professor at the school kind of recruited me into their program. Um, and I realized, so this was my sophomore year, by the time I graduated college, I realized that I wanted to be an actor. Because um, um, I felt, you know, uh, it was something that, and this is, I, I told this to the kids earlier today, to the youth, um, as a shy kid who was very insecure, um, one, what acting did for me is, uh, especially with someone with a stutter, uh, it rehearsing scripts and memorizing lines actually helped my stutter. Um, it helped me to concentrate on words because, you know, uh, with most people that stutter will tell you, you know, it's that their mind is going really, really quickly, you know, too fast for their words um, or for their mouth to catch up with. So it kind of settled me down. Um, but along with that, what acting did for me is it gave me, is it, it empowered me because I, I found something that I was good at. Um, I found something that not only was I good at, but I, I felt like I was gifted to do. You know, it was, it's something that came natural to me. And that empowerment actually kind of translated to other parts of my life. And, uh, and yeah, and then, you know, through a lot of, you know, rigmarole, is, do you say rigmarole in the UK? <laughs> is, that a, is that a thing? You can say what you want, Warren. Rigmarole. Um, <laughs> Cause I, yeah, Th through a lot of, you know, uh, going through, you know, this way and that way, uh, uh, eventually uh, I found an agent or an agent was willing to represent me and, and became an actor. Okay. There, there's a lot of, in, you know, other things in between there, but yeah, that's the, that's the uh, concise version of the story. And so you're an actor, you're also a youth minister in New York. Yes. And yes. you're like acting, you... That is your full-time job. You get paid enough to, to live and live in New York, By which the grace is of God, man. Yeah. Which is yeah, not uh, exactly cheap. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm very, very grateful for that. So uh, so yeah, I also, and this is actually quite recently, recent, like within the last maybe I I guess since I graduated at ACA, uh, like four years, I serve as a youth minister in the church that I go to. And uh, essentially what that means is um, on uh, some Sundays, you know, I teach. Uh, I teach youth from ages around 12 to about 19, sometimes a little older than that. Um, you know, give them foundation of Christ and, and, and the gospel. Um, it also involves mentorship. Um, I get to, I get the privilege of being able to pour into the lives of, 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 of youth in my neighborhood, um, most of which came from the same background, background as I. Um, uh, I am humbled that, you know, I get to sometimes act as a a father figure um, to, to, to some of the youth who, um, much like myself in many ways, grew up without, you know, parents or a father. 
Um, and, uh, and yeah, and, and, and it also, you know, admittedly, I get a lot of, uh, um, what's it called? It? Not street cred, but I get a lot of, um, I don't know. Brownie points? Hmm? Yeah, I, I, I get a lot of cool points because, you know, uh, they get to see me on TV sometimes. So <laughs> that's also kind of a novel thing. So, yeah. Okay, I don't know how in the world you do both acting and youth ministry, but um, we can get to that. You've also studied in Oxford. You mentioned ACCA. Right, that stands right. for the... Oxford Center for Christian Apologetics. Okay. Um, and if you were here last night to hear Dr. Sharon Dirks, uh, she teaches there. She was yeah. also one of my professors as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we'll get to some of that as well. Mm -hmm. And first of all, I just have to ask you. Yes. You were an American gangster. I was an American gangster. With Denzel Washington. With Denzel Washington. My hero. Your hero. Um, oh, wow. Okay. What is it like uh, acting in a film with big stars like Denzel Washington and Russell right. Crowe? Right. Well, you know, interesting story about that. So that was the first... Um, First professional, well, first movie that I was I was ever in, uh, and growing well, not growing up because like I said I didn't grow up wanting to be an actor. But w once I did, once I started to pay attention to movies and whatnot, um, Denzel Washington, uh, much like yourself, became my professional hero, uh, and it was my dream that I wanted to, because he's old enough to be my father, you know, I wanted to uh, be in like a play or movie or something where he would be portraying my father. And uh, it just so happened that uh, early on in my career, uh, well, it wasn't a career then, but you know, early on in my pursuit of a career, I had the opportunity to audition for this movie. I didn't know that it, would, it was gonna be American Gangster, but I had the opportunity to audition for it. and. Uh, I don't know if you notice, but when I get slightly nervous, I grin a lot. <laughs> so the, I didn't tell you this part before. So when I auditioned for this role, so they gave me this script and it was very, very serious. And I'm, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm gonna get, I can't remember what the lines are, but I'm sitting, I'm standing there grinning. And the, 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 the woman behind the camera, she's like, okay, Warner, we're gonna do it again. Just calm down. <laughs> And do it again. And in my head, you know, I just flubbed everything. And I remember going home. I was taking the subway, the the, the tube, as it's, it's called over here, uh, the subway. And I remember, like, I was sounds so uh, depressing, but I was crying on the train because I thought, oh man, but my one chance I had, you know, I, I messed it up. And and you know, I just thought that my career uh, ended before it began. And a week later, it was actually around my birthday uh, in the summer. Uh, June, uh, I get a call from an agent who dealt with the movie, and they called me up, and it was like right out of a movie. They said, uh, you know, are you sitting down right now? I said, no. Uh, well, you know, we found out that the director of the movie, whose name is Ridley Scott, uh, is desiring that you would be in this movie. And again, what made it uh, so profound to me is that, you know, I had dreamt of of uh, being in a movie or a play where I would be playing Denzel Washington's, you know, son, you know, he would be my father and take me under his wing. Um, I didn't, I wasn't playing his son, but I was in a movie where I was playing his younger brother. So this movie was quite literally a dream come true um, in, 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 in many, many ways. And to kind of put icing on it, uh, I found out that he and I attend the same church in New York, um, and I didn't tell you this part. <laughs> Recently, like two years ago, his wife, who's also an actress, um, she and I got to do a play together in New York. What made it even more special uh, is that we would be doing this play together and, she, and I would be playing her love interest. So I got to kiss Denzel Washington's wife <laughs> many times a week. Um, and she's old enough to be my mother, which is also a kind of a, a, a weird thing. In it. But I got to kiss Denzel Washington. But I mean, she's a lovely, lovely woman. <laughs> she's a lovely, sweet, kind woman. Um, but yeah, Miss Miss Pauletta Washington, and uh, you know, and her sons and daughters would come, and they would see this stranger kissing their mother every day. And thankfully, she didn't tell me, you know, because I I knew he was gonna come eventually, Denzel. Um, I knew he was gonna come eventually, but she was kind enough not to tell me. And when you know, the second to the last performance. He comes, and I didn't know, 
And, you know, we, we did the show like we always do, and I'm in my dressing room, and I'm just getting ready to go, and I open the door, and he's standing there like, <laughs> you know, yeah, good job, man. Good job. And he gives me, and I shake his hand, and I, it's like this. <laughs> and I jet out the back door. Um, but, uh, but yeah, yeah, Denzel Washington, uh, nice guy. Really, really nice guy. That's an amazing experience. Very much so. Um, tell us a bit, what, it, what is it like um, acting in a film? You've also done a lot of um, like a TV mm -hmm. shows and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I guess give us a little bit of a behind the scenes. What, what is it like for you as an actor right. in that uh, setting? Well, you know, I don't... Um, so because I didn't like grow up wanting to be an actor, you know, there's some people who know their whole life that this is what they want to do, and you know, so they become like I guess what's called like theater kids. They're always in the theater and and you know speaking the language and and kind of that's their only thing. Um, and and there you know there's some benefits to that. I didn't grow up wanting to be an actor, so I have other interests. You know, I love basketball. I like you know, engaging in, you know, conversations, you know, you know I, like, <laughs> I like cartoons. So, I, you know, I love, you know, getting into heated discussions about Bugs Bunny or Mickey Mouse, you know. Um, so when I'm on set, you know, I, it's never lost on me that I get to do this for a living. You know, like I've been doing this for, like, I, I guess maybe about a little over 10 years now. Um, and it's never lost on me that this is what I get to do as a profession. Um, so when I'm actually doing a, a television show or, or a play, there's the one side of me that, you know, this is my job. It is my job. And I, and I, and I approach it like it's my job, you know, with the professionalism, you know, and, and discipline. Um, but it's definitely not lost on me that I'm getting to work with like amazing actors. Like uh, so when I get back to the States, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, going to rehearsal for this Broadway show. And uh, two of the people in this Broadway show are like major, at least in America, major like film and television stars. And although, yes, it's my job and go in and I'm getting a paycheck, I'm also working with these, you know, Big people on on TV and, and film and you know and it's and it's great because we're you know we're we're, we're peers, um, so that's great. Um, but also, and this is going back to the you know me having out, uh, other interests. Um, I am am very fortunate that even from the beginning I knew that uh, acting, as much as I loved telling stories and I do, um, that it's not my identity. Um, I love that I get to tell stories. I love that I get to act. I love that I get to do all these things, but um, acting is not the sum total of who Warner is. Um, for me, uh, my identity in Christ uh, was very much uh, what, how, how I define myself. And, um, and, and it, it, that, that may s seem like a small distinction. Well, you know, acting is what you do, and yet... Um, but, but it really kind of comes into play when um, you aren't working as much as you would want to be working. And what the, uh, the, the danger is, is you kind of define how good of a person you are or how worthy of a person you are by how much you're working or by the job that you're working on. And, and that's the danger of like identifying yourself with your job or any job. Um, but because my identity is primarily in Christ, you know, yes, while I sometimes get disappointed, well, yeah, many times get disappointed when I don't get the job that I want, I ultimately know that my worth is not based on how much I work or the, the, uh, the, 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 the big, the, the, the grandeur of the project. It's, you know, my worth is in, in Christ. And, and when I go in on a project, I know that I'm, that I'm there to do a good job to do my job, but I'm also there um, to be a light. You know, I'm also there to, you know, in, in ho however I'm given the opportunity to, like, communicate my faith to someone. Now, you know, I'm, I'm not, uh, it doesn't, like, I'm not there, like, with a Bible underneath my arm every day, you know, waiting to, you know, smack someone in the face with my Bible, you know, telling them about, you know, Jesus or whatnot. Um, but, but, you know, because projects are, like, maybe two months, two and a half months, 
you know, I get to I get the opportunity to have uh, relationships with you know these men and women, and and inevitably, uh, it's funny. I rarely have to initiate a conversation. Someone al almost always asks me uh, about my you know about my faith and and kind of what you alluded to. How can you be a youth minister as well as a professional actor? And and it's through those conversations that I get to kind of you know, unpack, you know, why I believe what I believe, you know, and, and, and those types of things. So I don't know if, if that answered the question. But, no, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I guess, could you explain a little bit more what you mean mm -hmm. when you say your identity is in Christ? Yes. Uh, it means that uh, my uh, primary identifier um, is, is not based on what I'm doing, uh, it is not based on uh, how I look. Um, it is based on uh, whose image I'm made in. And I know that kind of seems kind of eth ethereal. Uh, so my wife, and you guys are the, probably the first to hear about this outside of Calum. My wife is pregnant. Hey. Oh, and this is being recorded. So well, by the time this goes out, maybe. But uh, I also just found out that she's having a girl, right? Before we found out that she would, that uh, that we were having, that I was having a daughter, and even saying that is like, oh, man, <clears throat> it's like profound to me. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, before we knew the sex of the child, uh, we didn't want to call the child it, because it clearly wasn't an it. Um, uh, <laughs> we uh, we're calling the child IB, meaning image bearer. Whatever that child would be, uh, whatever sex it would be, um, right now, even it's small, I think the, the size is like, the, it's, uh, she's the size of a lemon right now. Even at that size, that young lady is made in the image of God before she ever gets a job, before she even has a sex to claim, um, before she, uh, you know, uh, before anything, she is made in the image of God. Um, so because that is the first thing um, that we kind of are in life, um, that is for me my primary identifier. Now there are things on top of that. I'm also a son. I'm a father now. Uh, I'm an actor. Uh, I'm a husband. I'm a friend, and all those things, you know, come also. But primarily, my first is that I am made in the image of God. You know, I reflect. You know, I, I heard someone say quite poetically. You know. God is the sun and I, and I am the moon. You know, I have no light of my own. My job is to reflect the light of, of the sun. And, and, um, and I didn't mean to be so poetic, but, but yes. So, so that's kind of what I mean by uh, being made in the, in the, in the image or, or, or that being my identity. Um, it, it means that that's how I primarily identify myself. That, um, that is quite profound. And I imagine in the acting world, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I acted at university. I'm not a professional actor, mm -hmm. but you are judged a lot, I guess. For you know, sure. you're doing auditions where you're competing against other people, sometimes doing the exact same scene mm -hmm. after one another, and it's clearly like you're being judged on your acting ability compared to other people. It's also a weird profession in that you can be kind of, in some ways, discriminated against for a role based on your looks, your body, that kind of thing, in a way other you know, jobs can't be. For sure. Um, mm -hmm. And you also get rejected a lot. Is that, is that true? I, I get rejected more than I get accepted. I, I've, I've been told no, excuse me, I've been told no far more than I've been told yes. You know, like I've, I've auditioned <laughs> well over 200, 300 times for things. And, you know, I've maybe gotten a quarter of those things. You know, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. Uh, so yeah, yeah. And and to your point, the rejection can be anything from you know, oh, you didn't do the scene well, to uh, 
he reminds me of the guy who stole money from me, or you know, he looks like my ex-boyfriend, or uh, you know, I'm having a bad day. I don't want to, you know, it it, it 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 can be so random sometimes that you never know. Um, but you know, the rejection still hurts one and the same. And again, going back to the identity part, um, even in those cases, you know, again, it's good to know that you know my worth is not based on. Uh, me being accepted for this particular part, or you know, or me being, you know, um, seen as worthy of a you know particular, you know, TV show or, or, or film or whatnot. You know? okay. Yeah, and backing up a bit, mm -hmm. um, you were born born in New York, born and raised born in New York, mm -hmm. born and raised Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is kind of special on American. It's very special, um, man. And. Um, but you weren't always a Christian, though. Is that right? No, no. I, I definitely didn't come out of the womb a Christian. Um, <laughs> definitely, that came much later. Um, and do you have you have do you have siblings? What, I do. Your, I have. What was your kind of I guess growing right, up? Growing up. So I, I, I like to say like I was brought up in a family or even in a like a, a communal context where. If you asked most people, they would probably say that they were Christian, probably. Um, but their, the way that they lived wouldn't necessarily affirm to that proclamation or that profession. So I grew up knowing about Christianity, but like I didn't, it's not like I went to church or anything like that, or like I, I went to church like with my grandmother, um, you know, when I was staying with her, but you know, it wasn't something that I really thought of as something serious. Like it was something that people did, you know, it was a tradition, you know, I mean, I, and even me giving it a title, I didn't think about it enough to even assign a title to it because it was just, you know, something that people did sometimes, but you know, no one really took serious. And um, when I got to college, something happened to me um, that was, had the potential to be quite life-changing. Uh, I, 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 was, I was not necessarily a bad kid, but I was into things. You know, I, I, um, unfortunately, I, I didn't wait until marriage to have sex. Um, uh, so, you know, I was definitely sexually active. And I thought that I may have contracted something. And when I got to college, I remember praying this prayer that I'm sure many people have prayed for different things. God, if you get me out of this thing, I promise, you know, and add whatever you want to add to it. And... I remember being on a bus on my way to university, and I just prayed, you know, God, you know, if you get me out of this thing, I promise to find out who you are. Whatever, if, if, you, are, if, if you are an it, a she, a they, a he, a force, a power, an energy, whatever, um, I would promise. Now, I believe at the time I was serious, but I could, I, there was no way I could have known how profound that ask was. I was just looking to not be in the situation that I thought I was in. By the grace of God, I, I didn't, you know, uh, what, the, what I thought potentially could have been happening to me didn't, thankfully. Um, but I, I was, thankfully, I, I was serious about that request um, or that ask of God. So um, my college uh, was a, an arts college, so to speak, and I don't know if you, uh, many people know this, but artists, um, <laughs> I mean, it's not exclusive to artists, but artists definitely lend themselves on being, you know, spiritual and, you know, in, you know, sp you know into spirit, you know, I'm spiritual, I'm not religious, you know, I'm into, you know, either crystals or something like that and whatnot, and, and, and my college was like that. Um, many different religions were represented in, in my college. You know, it was my first time, 
you know, uh, having like a, a Buddhist friend and, and, you know, my kind of breath and width of religion was more, you know, there were the Christians, there were Jehovah's Witnesses, and there were what's called, I don't know if they have them in the UK as much, but uh, they're called the Nation of Islam. They were like an offshoot of Islam, but not really. They were more like black identity type of religion. And Rastafarianism, because my family's from the Caribbean. So those kind of the, the really the breadth and width of religious kind of experiences that I, that I had. Um, I never, uh, I always believed that there was a God, so I never was an atheist, and I never really knew any atheists until I got to, to college. So in college, atheist, uh, Buddhist, I met my first Zoroastrianist, which is a really, really old one. Um, but for me at that time, it was a prime location for me to, okay, I believe that God is real, so now you know, I get to kind of investigate all these religions and whatnot. And long story short, um, well, I'll say this. As honest of a seeker as I claimed myself to be, I had already kind of made it up in my mind, and I wouldn't have admitted it then, but I already made it up in my mind that Christianity probably was bogus because of what I believed I knew about it. You know, I grew up around a bunch of people who professed to be Christians, but they didn't seem to really take their own religion seriously, so why should I, you know? Um, it was kind of, again, like a tradition, you know, uh, something that people did. So. In as much as I was an honest seeker, I didn't really honestly seek Christianity. I'd already kind of dismissed that as a possible. Um, I was very much kind of leaning towards like, you know, Buddhism, because it seemed very like, kind of like a sexy, not, you know, physically sexy, but like a, a, a really, yeah, not physically sexy, but like, you know, it seemed like a, you know, like that's a, 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 an attractive, religion, you know, very much into, you know, the, the uh, accepting of other, or at least what I thought, accepting of other religions and about peace and, and love and stuff like that and service. And then the other one was Rastafarianism because, you know, again, very, very peace and, and you know, about my culture. And I, I like to smoke weed at that, at that point in my life. And so for, so for me, those were the ones, those were like the, the, the top one and one A's that I was looking for. Long story short, uh, what ended up happening is I would, kind, you know, uh, like I said, all these religions were represented in my school, and, and within the, you know, time of like maybe two and a half, three years, I would like kind of sit in on their conversations and, and listen to what they were saying, and the, and the craziest thing, every one of those religions, respectfully, that I listened to, people from their, um, you know, people that affirm those religions, each of them had some opinion about the person of Jesus Christ. Every single one, from Mormons to, to, to Jehovah's Witnesses to, to, uh, to like, uh, people who profess to be Jews to uh, Muslims to even atheists. A you know, the atheists that believe that Jesus was a real person, even they would concede that at the very least he was a good person. At the very least. So for me, that kind of... Uh, kind of flipped the switch in my head, said, okay, you know, maybe there's something to Jesus. Again, Christianity was already kind of, you know, in, in, in the rubbish bin, but Jesus, maybe there's something to him. Um, and so what I did for like the span of like maybe a year or so, and, and it wasn't like every day, it wasn't taking up every, you know, moment, uh, moment of my time, but uh, I would read things about Jesus. And, and, and at first, I started not reading the Bible because in my head, I already thought I knew uh, everything I need to know about the Bible, which is quite kind of um, funny because I never really read the Bible. So how could I know th what was in it? I, I, I don't know. It, it's, it's, it was hard to make sense. It's hard to make sense now, but at the time, I just knew that I knew what the Bible said, although I never read it before. Um, but uh, so, yeah, I just started, you know, reading, you know, what I could find about the historical Jesus and 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 that eventually, eventually I started reading like the Bible and what, you know, what really Jesus said about himself and about, you know, what the gospel was. And again, this was, you know, it, it took a long time, but eventually I <laughs> under a slight protest, but, you know, trying to be an honest seeker, I conceded that this man, Jesus, not only was he unique among the 
the the the the the leaders of their of religions like the you know Muhammad's and the Gautama Buddhas and the Krishnas and and all these other um, not only was he unique among them but I also began to believe that he was and is exactly who he said he was and is. He's the son of God. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, again, still, even conceding all of that, I still wasn't willing to entertain Christianity. I know that seems kind of like a, well, you, I, 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 I split the two apart. Christianity was this thing over here, but Jesus was something else. And um, through a process of years and, and God kind of showing me my own heart, and my own biases and, and, and whatnot, eventually I came to not only love Jesus, but love his people as flawed as we are, um, as, as much, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, dumb stuff we do. Um, I still love his people. Um, um, but, but yeah, that, that's kind of the... The, the journey of me coming to, to Christ and to be where I am today. Okay. I have a lot of questions off yes. the back of that. Yes. Um, and I'm going to hit you with a bunch of them. Hit them. But I'm going to hit you with them after a 10-minute break. That is so um, good. Because we need to have a break. <laughs> so we're going to take um, 10 minutes. I also want to ask you some more about your know, acting career as well. Mm-hmm. But 10-minute break, if you'd like to get a drink or use the leaves or grab some more food, and I will call us back and just... Uh, 10 minutes, and we will uh, continue chatting with Warner Miller. Enjoy. That was.
Okay. If you want to grab a seat, and hopefully in just a moment the music is going to go off. There we go. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, do grab a seat. I'm going to start round two. With would it be Warner distracting Miller. if I did round two in my, my best English accent? I think, would it would be, be I think it would be very distracting. Right, I won't, I won't yeah. Do it. Yeah. Um, just as distracting if Sharon last night did it <laughs> in her best American accent. Um, great. Okay. Um, I have so many questions, Warner. Okay, um, I'll try to answer. Let's start where we stop, though. You were talking about kind of your, you were exploring kind of what different people at university said mm -hmm. about, about Jesus and about and different religions. Mm -hmm. um, but you seemed especially attracted to Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus of Nazareth, I guess mm -hmm. you could say. Um, I guess what for you, what, what makes Jesus different? Why, why Jesus over, yeah, right. of um, religions? Yeah, no, that, that's a, I mean, it's a really great question. Uh, well, one of the many things that made uh, Jesus at least intriguing to me was, again, like I said, um, every religious, well, every person that was represented from those religions universally conceded at worst that this person, Jesus, was a good person. At worst, he was a good person. The same couldn't be said for, respectively, for Muhammad. The same couldn't be said for Gautama Buddha. Uh, the same couldn't be said for, for any other religious head. But Jesus, universally, was uh, at least considered to be a good person. So that in and of itself was kind of like, wow, you, you would be, uh, I, I don't know if you could find one other person that universally is regarded as at least a good person. So that's number one. Um, Number two, uh, I mean, well, not going in order, but another uh, kind of unique thing about Jesus was, you know, in all of, whether it's, again, I'm, I'm using those three because those are the, the biggest ones that, that pop in my head, uh, with Islam, with Muhammad, or, or Gautama Buddha, you know, they all claim to be, listen, if you follow me, I will take you to a way of life. Like, I will teach you a way of life to make your life better, in a sense. That's a, a very overly simplistic way of putting it, but essentially that's what it, you know, if you kind of, if, if uh, uh, yield to my teachings, uh, these things will make your life better to a certain degree. However, Jesus said, I won't teach you a way of life, but I am literally the way. I'm not going to take you to a way. I am the way. I am the way. Now, that is a very bold, dare I say, almost arrogant thing to say. It's not just that, you know, I'm going to, you know, teach you a bunch of principles about life and, and, and these things will make your life better. No, I am actually the way. I am life incarnate. Um, and for a person to be considered really, really good, but to make such a potentially uh, bold or arrogant statement, they can't be both. They can't be both good and arrogant or deluded at the same time. Um, so you kind of forced with a choice to make. Either this person, Jesus. I mean, I think C.S. Lewis says the uh, you know Jesus is either uh, a lunatic, uh, a liar, um, or he's Lord. And and it was kind of that way for me. You know. Uh, Jesus was either a crazy person, um, he was a liar, or he was exactly who he said he was. Um, so that for me, those two things, among other things, made Jesus uh, very unique, very unique. And, and what he said about me, you know, he, he didn't say that, uh, you know, if I just, you know, you know, dig in and, 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 and strive to be a good person that, you know, I would one day ascend to nirvana or paradise or, or what have you. 
You know, if I, you know, paid my taxes on time, if I was, you know, good to my mother, if I was, you know, a really good student, if I just, you know, buckled down and became a good person, that that would be, no, he actually said, you know, actually there's nothing innately inside you that could earn this salvation. And for me, you know, I mean, it took a while for me to be honest with myself, but like that's actually true because even on my best day, I knew the stuff that I thought. And the stuff that I thought was not pretty. Um, you would never know that, but I did. You know, even when I did something good for someone, I knew that sometimes in my heart was like, yeah, I hope they see this good thing I did and, and see that I'm like a really, really good person. You know, like there was some ulterior motives going on in my heart. And Jesus was the only one that, kind of, that addressed that. It wasn't just a, an outside, uh, you know, a cleaning up of the outside and just becoming a good moral person. It was actually very holistic. It was inside that affects the outside, and Jesus uh, is and was very unique in, 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 in identifying that in, in myself and in humanity. You keep, um, you've used quite a few times this term, by the grace of God. Um, oh, yeah. What do you mean when you say that? Um, I mean, depending on what the context is, I, I, I sometimes mean a, a myriad of things, but I think for the most part, uh, I say that there are times when I know that my actions and my way of life did not add up to me receiving the good thing that happened. Um, I know that. I get kind of uh, overwhelmed with that because, you know, I did a lot, uh, you know, I mean, I wasn't like a, a murderer or anything like that, although, you know, in God's eyes, you know, sin is sin and that. But, you know, I mean, I, I, I did a lot of, like, messed up stuff um, that, you know, doesn't equate to me living the life that I live. Not that my life is perfect by any means, but, you know, based on the stuff that I did and the people that I did it to, there's no mathematical reason to why I should have or enjoy or be able to do the things that I do. Um, even beyond, you know, like, you know, the career and stuff like that, that's, I'm, I'm, I mean, even having parents that love me or, you know, uh, 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 health, you know, um, you know, I wasn't the best to myself. So, some, so when I say, you know, the grace of God sometimes, I am audibly recognizing that, uh, the things that I've been allowed to do didn't come by my digging in and just being a good person because I know what kind of person I am. And that's not me being self-deprecating. I'm not like, you know, beating myself up. Oh, you're not, you know, it's not that, you know, that's, that, that's not holy or righteous or, you know, godly to, you know, beat yourself up. I'm, I'm not doing that. But I am recognizing um, that, you know, listen, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in my head and, and in my mind and in my past and present that, you know, aren't necessarily the best. And, um, and, and, and the good things that I receive are because are, he's been very, very gracious to me. The end. Yeah, thank you. No, thank you for sharing that. That's really, that's really helpful. Um, you've mentioned how for you... Um, Jesus doesn't just kind of say, here's a set of teachings or rules, but mm -hmm. he says kind of, I am the way, I mm -hmm. am the life, mm -hmm. um, I am God. Um, and so that makes him, I guess, unique compared to most other people mm -hmm. uh, you meet. But I guess what difference does that make? Um, why particularly for you, why follow Jesus? Right. Um... <laughs> Well, I mean, again, for me, like, I, there was never a time where I, you know, didn't believe that there was a God. So, so that, for me, already puts me on a, like, I believe that there's something other than me out there. Um, so, with regard to Jesus, if I believed that he was not only 
the way to God, but God himself, um, you know, and, and, and all the things that come with God. And by God, and I, I, I try to qualify, because, you know, God, the, the word God can mean different things to different people. Um, just to, for clarity's sake, what, what I mean when I say God, among other things, is I mean that God is the, what I call it, the first, uh, the uncaused first cause. Uh, nothing was before God, yet God created everything. God was the first. He was, um, uh, again, nothing came before him. So because of that, if, if he being the, uh, God being the originator, um, then it would be safe to assume, and, and forgive me for being kind of base when I say this, um, if he is the originator, uh, then I have to kind of believe that, all right, if he if he's kind of create if God's kind of created everything, then he would be then God would be a good source of knowledge of how to live this life, um, how to navigate through this life, and um, and for me, you know, I think most people they want to learn how to they want to know how to navigate through life, you know. Uh, so if this person Jesus is claiming that he's not only the way. Um, the life, but also the truth. He's not a way to truth. He actually is the embodiment of truth. Then Jesus would be the prime candidate, if I could say that, to uh, for, for uh, prime candidate of life for me to follow. Um, um, because what God did by you know uh, what they what I've they call you know he wrapped himself in flesh you know to 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 say i follow god even to that phrase is kind of abstract you know what does that to follow god to follow god but when you say you know when, when god wrapped himself in flesh and actually became a model from which that we could actually look and see okay what does he feel about, how, how did he treat women you know how did he treat money you know how did he treat you know just living life you know we have a living example of how to navigate life so so for me following uh jesus gave me the best blueprint to uh not only get through life but get through it as successfully um as uh and and, and as fulfilled as i as i can um so yeah okay um a lot of people would think um, being a Christian and, and acting don't necessarily go well. Um, I mean, for a lot of people, the idea of religion, of faith, of God, of church is quite anti-fun. Um, where acting and being in a film with Denzel Washington, that sounds like a cool life. Um, yeah, has, has being a Christian, I guess, dampened your experience of life and, and, and acting or yeah man what you know you it's funny so again you know i just like I, I was i didn't grow up you know wanting to be an actor like I, I mentioned before i also didn't grow up as a christian and i was not a christian long enough to remember hearing other christians say yeah you know life with god is so good and it's so this and so that and i and i can remember very clearly like looking at him very skeptical very um you know and i, I would never dare to say anything because i just wasn't that type of person but i definitely i didn't believe it i didn't believe it like how do you you know you say you you're having fun but you know it, it just seemed very put on to me to be quite honest with you and um now, being on the other side of that, um, yeah, you know, I, I honestly, I honestly, and I mean, I, I think there are, you know, people that don't, you know, ascribe to Christianity in here. Um, and so I, I understand that what I'm about to say also, you have that same response. I get it. I do. I get it. Um, but I, I honestly will say, yes, being an actor and being a Christian, there are things that um, I, I, I don't do. I don't do, but it's not out of some uh, religious constraint. It actually conflicts with um, who I want to be in life. So, like, so there are things that uh, you know, projects that I've had to turn down um, 
but, but I turn them down less because, oh, I'm a Christian, I can't do this, versus I don't want to do that. I don't want to be seen as that. I don't want to represent this sort of person or, or this worldview. Now, I say that with the knowledge I did. I don't know if you've ever seen Luke Cage, but, you know, uh, one, Luke Cage is not a Christian show. Just I'll put that out there. It is based on a comic book. It is, it is, there's no Jesus mentioned in it. Um, there's no church mentioned in it. So, you know, it's quite a secular, uh, secular show. And to be honest with you, I've never done a Christian TV show. or Not that I'm opposed to it. I've just never done it. Um, however, the characters, and I was, I was talking to Callum about this, you know, my uh, requisite... I know this wasn't directly what you asked, but my requisite, uh, my criteria for, for whether I do or don't do something is very simple. And it had to be simple because if it were complicated, then I could kind of, you know, find the loopholes and get around it. It, it has to be simple for me. And for me, um, my criteria is, is that if I'm offered a part to do, and by doing this part, it prohibits or diminishes me from being able to communicate my faith to someone without distraction. If I can't do that as a result of doing this part, then it's something that I can't do. So using Luke Cage as an example, I, it's, it's a fictional character based on a comic book um, that the average sane person would know isn't real, right? Um, I can play that character and then on a Sunday, which is actually what happened, the show came out and I had to teach that following Sunday and my youth were like, oh, spoiler alert, oh, you killed Pops, you killed Pops. And you know, they said it with a smile on their face, but I, but, but, but I knew that they were able to distinguish, okay, uh, the person on the television show that shot this superhero that has bulletproof skin, they were able to separate that from the Warner that they knew, you know. Um, so for me, that wasn't, that, that didn't, uh, that doing that part uh, didn't endanger me from being able to, to speak the gospel. There was no contradiction. They could, you know, uh, um, uh, separate the two. However, there have been parts that, uh, and one in particular comes to mind, where uh, I was going to be portraying a character, and, and it's not, you know, because I, obviously I don't agree with shooting up superheroes, you know, that's not something I agree with. Um, but, so I've played many a character that I don't agree with philosophically. Um, but this character in, in, in particular, I would not only be playing a character who I disagree with philosophically, but I would also have to engage in acts that, if done, would confuse a message that I've been speaking as a, not even just a youth minister, but also just as a person. And, and given the landscape that we live in, it would make the already confusing waters even that much more confusing. Wait, are you telling me you, be, you believe this? But, but you said that you believe this. Um, so in that case, I turned it down. Um, but, but, but to your original question, um, I don't find a lack of fun. I actually find... Uh, a lot of good structure that allows me to enjoy life even better. I just gave a talk a couple Sundays ago to the, about boundaries, and the you know, and when when people when most people hear of boundaries, they automatically think of constraint and restriction. And there's this illustration of you know, suppose a, a, a fish, and forgive me for going on, on a tangent, but suppose a fish. Uh, said, you know what, I am tired of, these, of the boundary of this water. I'm tired of the bondage that living in this pool uh, gives me, and I want to break free of the bondage of this water and live on land. But he's already laughing. What would happen if that fish decided to jump out of that water and live on land? That fish would eventually die, Right? It is only within the boundaries and the restriction of that water that that fish is actually able to live life and live life by the fullest. And in fact, the things that they, uh, what they consider freedom actually is leading to its death. So for me, uh, being a follower of Jesus Christ provides a structure and uh, boundaries or guardrails to actually allow me to enjoy life, um, enjoy people 
enjoy, you know, uh, uh, travel and everything, enjoy things that much better. Um, so, yeah, that's a very roundabout way. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Um, well, I guess what, what has been some of your, um, I guess, what, what has been a, a highlight for you mm-hmm. um, in acting? And what has been maybe a low light for you? What's highlight, highlight? Well, there was, um, <laughs> I think I've had nothing but, I know it sounds, I've had nothing but highlights. Like, it really has been great. By the grace of God, it, it, it really has been a great. I've had a great. Bless you. It's been a, a great career. Um, no, I'm gonna. Bless you. I mean, I'm gonna say it. I heard it. You know. Um, yeah, I've had. I've, it's, it's been great. And and one of the things. So I'll, I'll share this as a kind of a great thing. So uh, I, as as Callum mentioned, I went to. Uh, I took a year off. Um, I was working on a show called Boardwalk Empire. It's an American show that comes on. Uh, Channel, cable channel called HBO, uh, popular show, um, but it was the last season and it got canceled. Um, uh, my character died and all this other stuff. So I had time on my hands. So I was able to take a year off and go away to study at Oxford at the, at the uh, Oxford Center of Christian Apologetics. And while I was there, um, we studied a bunch of stuff, you know, uh, uh, comparative religion, philosophy, you know, the, I mean, just a myriad of things, social stuff. Um, so when I graduated, the very first project that I, I, I did was uh, uh, Luke Cage. That I did that. So I graduated in June, started working on Luke Cage in September. And uh, one of the actors uh, that I was working closely with is, a, I don't, again, I don't know if you know, but he's a, he's a two-time Academy Award winner. His name is Mahershala Ali. He's the one that played the main villain in the first season of Luke Cage. Now, he is a very, very kind guy, very kind. Um, he also is, uh, he's, he's a Muslim. Um, but his uh, specific, I guess, tract of Islam is the same tract as a colleague of both of ours who, who's, who's uh, passed away. His name is Nabil Qureshi. Um, Nabil Qureshi, who uh, is now a Christian, he's passed on, but he grew up as uh, an Ahmadi Muslim. And that's the same tract of Islam that this, uh, uh, my, one of my uh, co-actors claimed. So anyway, um, we would you know, do our scenes together and like have like really, like it was a really, really fun time. And like I said before, he approached me about my faith first, just asking. And, and it's never contentious. It's never a fight or anything like that. Never, ever, ever. I've never been in an argument with someone about my faith. I, I find that less people are one to Christ through arguments than they are through, you know, loving him and living out your faith. I don't think anyone was one through Christ through a good argument. Um, so we would have these talks and I found out that he was this specific tract of Islam. And I was like, yo, I just went to school with this other guy. And he's this time. And, he would, and, and Nabil would, you know, tell us about, you know, uh, this is what you look for when you're talking to and engaging with these types of Muslims. So we would have these really in-depth conversations. And they were so good. And they were so long. And, and again, not that at the end of our conversation, he dropped to his knees and proclaimed Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. It wasn't anything like that. But the fact that not only was he willing to give me a listen but he also, this Academy Award winning actor, was also willing to uh, entertain uh, some, of the, uh, some of the things that I was saying. Um, that for me uh, was quite a high moment because it truly merged the two parts of my life that I really don't consider two, but other people, like I don't consider uh, this is the, the Christian part of my life and this is the acting part of my life. They've always been one and the same. I'm, a, um, I'm an actor who loves Jesus. There, there's no contradiction. There's no, you know, there, there's no, uh, you know, melding of, of them together. It's, it's just who I am. And, and this circumstance was a kind of a snapshot of what I always envisioned my career being you know, being very much an uh, actor, working, you know, in high level and, and doing great projects while also being able to serve as a, as a you know, as a servant of Christ. Um, so, yeah, that's been a high, was a high moment for me. 
As I recall, Mashallah Ali also throws you off a building in the uh, cage. Yeah. He does. He yeah. does. Uh, well, um, just a bit of uh, movie magic. He threw me to the ledge and my stuntman. <laughs> Not me. They would have to pay me significantly more to. <laughs> so you don't do your own stunts then? I don't do my own stunts. <laughs> I don't. Okay. I was a stuntman. Um, we're getting near the end mm -hmm. of our time. Um, I wanted to ask you two questions to close first. Um, the first one, I guess, coming back on to the topic of Jesus, you've, um, you've shared really honestly and openly about um, your own life and your own experience and the impact he's had. And um, it really resonates, I, I think, with me and I think probably with a lot of us here the idea of not necessarily deserving what we get mm -hmm. in life, a lot of the good, and sometimes also the bad. Mm -hmm. um, what, I guess, and you've mentioned this word um, kind of, of of Jesus being Savior and Lord. You've mentioned words salvation. Uh, I guess ultimately for you, why Jesus? Mm -hmm. so that's my first one. I'll ask mm -hmm. you my next one after that. Um. First thing, I, this won't be my answer, but the first thing when you said that, I was like, why not Jesus? Um, but, uh, well, I mean, the things that I, I mentioned before, you know, just how unique he is amongst the pantheon of God. There was a, a book, and they, they had it in the, uh, in the, I guess, the cartoon of me, uh, a book that had a profound impact on me. It was called Jesus Among Other Gods. And I read this book early, early on in my Christianity, because um, when I saw the book, I thought that it was like an expose exposing the the real Jesus and how the, you know the church is like you know the, the controversy and stuff like that. Because the title is kind of provocative in that way, you know, Jesus among the other gods, you know, and how. Um, but it actually ended up being a book about how Jesus um, lines up and excels. Uh, above the, the the founders of the the, the three major religions, um, or I think it was just uh, Buddhism and and Islam, and um, so one why Jesus, just because of how unique he is, um, how unique he is as what he professed and what he claimed um, in being God, claiming to be the way to God, claiming to be the truth incarnate, um, and this part, uh, why Jesus? Because insofar as I know, I know this is not the, the same in Islam, um, but for God to call himself or to identify himself as love um, is quite profound to me uh, because it's not just that God does loving things, um, or he sees you lovingly. But in 1 John, uh, I think it's 1 John, the third chapter, uh, it says that God is love, is love. Um, and that, for me, kind of shapes my worldview in, 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 in as much as, you know, whatever God or whatever... Um, I experience in life, I'm, I'm going to add a third one, too, to kind of complement that. Uh, whatever I experience in life, it is not beyond the scope, the, the reach of a loving God. And not only is, is God loving, but Jesus himself says that we can refer to God, the master and creator of everything, we can refer to him as Father. So for the master creator of everything to say that I can call him father, like I'm not, we're not just creations, you know, we're not just the thing that he was doing in his spare time, you know, some ants that he put in the ant farm to watch live, but he's, God is actually invested in my life, um, very moving. It's very profound because um, for him, for, for me to call him father means that 
I can have a relationship. You know, it's not just creature creation. It's not just inventor invention. It's actually father, son. And, you know, as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm having a daughter, and I don't even know this young lady, but I already love her. There's already nothing that I wouldn't do for her. And I know that my love is flawed for the creator of everything to look at me like that is overwhelming. So, and I, I, I don't find that in any, 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 any other worldview, um, the love of a father in God. Wow. I'm weepy today. I feel like, <laughs> whew, oh. my goodness. I feel like I'm on an opera or something. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just hold do, of yourself, man. Go I'll ahead. just do my hair a bit differently, and yeah. yeah. Um, no, but thank you for that. Yeah, man. Um, a final question, mm -hmm. and this is a question I ask um, every guest. Just that in this room, where where there's some people here who are, are Christians, there's some people who are not. Mm -hmm. Some people maybe who are really skeptical mm -hmm. about um, Christianity, about God, about faith, church, religion. Um, some people who are really curious and maybe really wrestling with this and asking a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. um, what would be kind of your, your final piece of advice for um, like those, uh, for all of us here? Yeah, man. Um, I'm going to actually, um, Sharon mentioned it last night, and I'm actually going to second what she mentioned. You know, uh, if something, it's, if, if something is true, then it can be poked, it can be prodded, you can check under the hood, as you know, we say, you can kick the tires, you, know, you can even not believe it, and it's still going to be true. It's going to be true whether I believe it or not. You know, if I decided to go up to the top of this building and say, I don't believe in gravity, and jump off, regardless if I believe in gravity or not, gravity is going to have its way. Um, and it's the same thing or similar with God. If, if, if God is true, then it, God can be tested. You know, it can be, uh, you know, the, the, the notion of God can be, and, and, and by God, again, I'm, I'm being, uh, I don't want to be general. Yes, the uncaused first cause, but specifically Jesus Christ. If, if, if it is true, then, then, then this claim can be tested. Um, so I would say uh, test it. Ask questions, and when you ask questions, because uh, I, I, I didn't, and even now I still ask questions, which is why apologetics was, uh, I, was I, I had an affinity for it. Um, ask questions, and don't be satisfied with bumper sticker answers or shallow answers, because that doesn't satisfy. It may pacify for a second, but eventually your mind is going to be like, well, you know, that wasn't a good answer. That wasn't a good answer. Um, so ask questions. Even as if, you, if you're already a Jesus follower or a Christian, ask questions. Don't be satisfied. Now, yes, well, not don't be satisfied. You may not get the answer to every question. Now, let, me, let me put that there. But it doesn't mean that those, that those questions you ask don't have answers because they do. Um, so, yeah, ask questions and test. Uh, you know, test and see if Jesus Christ was who he said he was. Um, and it is my uh, belief um, that, uh, that you will not be disappointed. You won't be disappointed. Um, that God loves you. I know that's such a cliche thing to say now. You know, oh, God loves you, God loves you. <sighs> but it is the truth. God loves you, brother. God loves you, sister, whoever that is in here. God loves you. And he didn't just tell you that he loves you, but he actually did something. You know, because I, I can say a whole bunch of stuff, but if my actions don't prove it, then what I said is, is like toilet paper. God not only told you that he loves you, but he actually did something. He said, I'm going to take the punishment, the penalty, for what all of us deserve for, you know, us, us misstepping and for doing the wrong things. Because I love you, I'm going to take that. Um, just 
when I was younger, uh, I used to try to go to this club back where I lived. And I, I wish he had a picture, but I did not look like how I look now. I have big glasses, you know, like I said, you know, clothes weren't. Yet I would try to get into this club. And uh, every, well, I would go like every other Saturday. I never got in. Every other Saturday, I would go into this line, and the bouncer would be in the, at the doorway, and he would, you know, let people behind me in. It was embarrassing. And I don't know why I submitted myself to this embarrassment every other Saturday, but I did, because I wanted to get into this club, and I never did. So Saturday, I think it was like August, I may have been like 20, 21, try to get into, I was in line, and just like clockwork, bouncer is there, and I know it in my heart. He's about to send me away, and right before he did, I have a cousin who I still, you know, he's, we we're still very close. My cousin was already inside. Now, my cousin was not like me. He was very cool. He still is. Always had the great clothes. You know, the girls liked him and all this other stuff. He could go into the club no problem because his brothers were cool and everything like that. He was already inside. So right before this bouncer is about to, you know, sh shoot me away, my cousin, who's already on the inside, comes out and is like, hey, Warren, how you doing? How you doing? And he puts his arm around me, and I go right into the club. The bouncer is just, like, looking at me, and I'm looking at him, like, <laughs> and I go right into. Now, what changed about me? I guarantee you I was still wearing those Coke bottle glasses. My clothes certainly did not change at all. The only thing that changed about me was the person co-signing for me. The only thing that changed about me is now when that bouncer saw me, he didn't just see me, he saw me and my cousin, and that made me cool, <laughs> right? I wasn't cool in and of myself, because again, my clothes illustrated a different story, but my cousin was, and, that's, and that was enough to get me into this club in a very similar way. It's the exact same thing with God. Now, had I stayed in that line and like refused my, my cousin's help and said that, okay, no, 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 I'm going to, you know, yeah, this is going to be the night, you know, that I'm going to get into this club, you know, yeah, maybe if I just, you know, slick my hair and, you know, take my glasses off. But at the end of the day, I would have still been Warner. And Warner couldn't have gotten into that club by himself. No matter how I tried to fix myself up, no matter how much I tried to, you know, whatever, I was still me. But because, again, he saw my cousin, that's what got me in, and in a very similar way. Um, that's how we, I don't know, if get into heaven is the, is, the quite, is, is the right vocabulary, but, you know, trying to be pleasing to God by doing good stuff, although it's admirable and it's very moral, that's what other religions tell you. Be a good person. Uh, you know, be, you know, give alms, be nice, be, you know, this, do that, be, you know, pay your taxes on time, be, a, you know, obey the speed limit, you know, walk, you know, old ladies across the street, you know, be a, you know, feed your pets, stuff like that. That's what, you know, be a good person, right? However, Christ rightly identifies that even if you try to be a good person, you are still you. You are still you. And, it's, and what makes you unequipped for heaven is not the fact that you just do uh, things that are immoral, but that your very heart doesn't want to do those things. And it's until we accept the out hand of Christ that we are now allowed into club heaven, if I can use that terminology. Um, so... I would just tell you as a last word, investigate that. Test that. See if it makes sense. See if that jibes with what you know in your heart of hearts. Be honest with yourself. This is not about church. It's not about church. Churches and Christians have done historically bad things throughout history. That I'm not denying that at all. I've been the recipient of it, and I've also done it. So this is not about uh, uh, joining yourself to churches or Christians or whatnot. This is about you and Jesus. 
yeah, Warner, well, Christians have done this type of thing. You know what? You're right. But what does that have to do with you and Jesus? Yeah, man, but churches, man, I don't like the way they do. You know what? You're absolutely right. But what does that have to do with you and Jesus? At the end of the day, that's the question. What about you and Jesus? So that's what I would would be my final 10-minute last words. <laughs> well, you mentioned, Warner, um, uh, I guess being honest, and uh, I really appreciate how honest you've been, how much you've shared from your life, your stories, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, really excited uh, for you ongoing and uh, growing family as well. Yeah. So um, can we give Warner a big round of applause? Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Appreciate it. This is our um, final Real Lives uh, for 2019. Uh, it's been an amazing week, and thank you so much um, for all the people who've made it possible. Um, can we also give a round of applause? Um, uh, Revolution to Cuba have been hosting us amazingly and making amazing food, and we're so appreciative to the staff um, for all that they've done. Can we give them also just a big round of applause? Ow! And um, just in closing, uh, Warner mentioned in his story, um, uh, again, very honestly, about kind of having judged Christianity in many ways without having actually read the Bible for himself. And um, if you would like to kind of investigate for yourself um, as an adult, put your brain, put your heart, and and just look at it for yourself and, and what you think about some of what Warner's been saying about who Jesus is, Um, really uh, the best place to start is to read one of the first-hand accounts of Jesus' life, uh, to read one of the the Gospels, um, one of the eyewitness accounts about who uh, Jesus was, what he was like, um, about his life and what he did. And we'd love to give you um, one of those if that's something you'd like to do, if you'd like to explore for yourself. Um, This uh, lovely little book is called Uncover Mark. It's Mark's Gospel, um, it's an account of Jesus' life, but it's also got um, in it questions. Um, in the middle of the book, there's kind of questions on different, about different passages within Mark's gospel to help you kind of unpack and explore and, and look at it for yourself. It's also got lots of things like historical context and different videos you can look up um, that explain more, that kind of thing. Um, I find this a really brilliant and helpful thing to, to explore um, to look at and decide for myself kind of who, who is Jesus, not just who people say Jesus is, not, not kind of even say what Warner says Jesus is, but let, let me look for myself at the first-hand text and decide. And it's a brilliant thing to do with a friend, maybe somebody who you came with, maybe over a pint, over a cup of coffee, um, over a piece of pizza, whatever, and look and explore side by side for yourself. If that's something that you would like to do, we'd love to give this to you. It's our gift to you. Um, and I will be just over, um, just over here in this little alcove over here. Um, if you'd like one, just come over. I'd love to give it to you. Um, Warner is going to be around uh, for a little bit. If you have any uh, questions, want to chat a little bit further. Um, and just thank you so much for being here and enjoy your evening. That is the end of Real Life 2019. Thank you very much. <laughs>